Hello, welcome to 2017. Hope you've stopped writing down 2016 as the date on official forms by now. At this point, having survived the relentless hype of last year's Christmas games, you might be wondering what you have to look forward to playing in 2017. Well, here are seven games you might not already have heard of, but that deserve a coveted spot on your Xbox hard drive. Fantasy third-person stealth game Styx Shards of Darkness is a bit like the Thief games if Garrett was a bit shorter, a bit greener, and had exactly the same taste in fashionable leather hoodies. Whereas the first Styx game was something of a cult curio, the second game appears to have been graced with things like a budget and resources. The result is a remarkably pretty elven city to scramble around, all powered by Unreal Engine 4. Being a goblin, protagonist Styx has some stealth options above and beyond your usual undercover operative, like the ability to actually become invisible or hurl a clone of himself like a grenade and teleport to that clone's location. How you complete each mission is up to you, but let's just say, if you have a thing for dissolving people in acid, then you're in luck. Smoking's bad for you, Real bad. Nice to know even the fantasy world of Korongar has helpful anti-smoking PSAs. Look out for your fellow workers. They look out for you. The Surge developer Deck 13 probably isn't allowed to call its upcoming game Sci-Fi Dark Souls for legal reasons, so instead it's called a Hardcore Action RPG with a focus on tactical melee combat. That's a bit of a mouthful though, so I'm just going to say it. The Surge is Sci-Fi Dark Souls. But given that the developer's previous game, Lords of the Fallen, was basically just Dark Souls, it's good to see them branching out at least a little bit. Still, we're actually pretty excited about this one. It's not often you get a sci-fi game that isn't focused on pew-pew laser guns, and it looks like exactly the sort of measured, considered melee combat that makes the Souls games so engaging. Obviously, the chances of it being as excellent as From Software's seminal and punishing action RPG are pretty slim, but if it achieves even a fraction of what Dark Souls does in terms of world building and precision combat, it'll be well worth a look. Oh, though while we're comparing it to Dark Souls, I should point out, no vital signs found is nowhere near as snappy as you died. This is not a scheduled break time. Raiders of the Broken Planet is a gorgeous looking sci-fi action game that basically no one has heard of. Every video of it on YouTube has about 8 views. We're going to break the streak though, right guys? You'll stick around for us. The game is made by Mercury Steam, the folks who made the excellent Castlevania Lords of Shadow and the not quite as excellent Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2. Characters have diverse abilities, giving the game a sort of Overwatch vibe, and it combines slick shooting with crunching melee combat. A series of single player missions will familiarise you with each of their skills, then a promised multiplayer mode will allow you to really put those playstyles to the test. Mainly though, it just looks stunning, particularly for a game that's maintaining such a low profile. We have two questions for you, Mercury Steam. One, why are you hiding your light under a bushel? And two, what even is a bushel? The problem with sci-fi is that it ages really badly, and not just the haircuts. You know, watching all those 80s sci-fi movies where people are staring at CRT screens while you have the whole internet in your pocket? That's why Torment Tides of Numenera plays it safe by being set on Earth a billion years in the future. A billion. That way everything is so far-fetched and there have been enough cataclysmic falls of civilization that all bets are off. You might have the internet in your pocket right now, but in Torment it's probably walking around on internet-y legs trying to pick a fight with a sentient Netflix. Torment Tides of Numenera is pitched as a spiritual sequel to Planescape Torment, a brilliantly written and beautifully dark 1999 RPG that had PC players in raptures. Tides of Numenera was the result of a massively successful Kickstarter campaign, but we're getting it on console as well. You might recall 2001 A Space Odyssey author Arthur C. Clarke's assertion that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Well, Torment takes that to heart, which is why even though it has a science fiction theme, the influence of fantasy RPGs looms large as well. You might don a living suit of armour, team up with a multi-dimensional woman, or explore a labyrinth inside your own brain. And yet we're a billion years in the future and there are still no hoverboards. What the hell? We're paying you to raise an army of agents, not a street game. If you are getting cold feet, then go beg someone else to save the world from Legion. Otherwise, just sign the checks and shut up. Believe it or not, this is technically a Saints Row game, sort of, in that it takes place in the same universe. A street game? Hard. It's hardly surprising that Saints Row Studio Volition decided to mix things up after the last Saints Row game, in which they painted themselves into a corner by giving you superpowers and, spoiler alert, blew up the earth. Where else do you go from there? Turning the leader of the Saints into a trans-dimensional being of pure energy who still laughs at dick jokes? Actually, we would probably still play that. 
Rather than that, though, Agents of Mayhem takes place in futuristic Seoul in Korea, where the agents face off against Legion, who have the best acronym name we've heard in ages. It stands for League of Evil Gentlemen Intent on Obliterating Nations. Not sure how being exclusively gentlemen jibes with modern employment law, but I suppose that's low on their list of priorities. Instead of controlling a single agent, you flip between three of them, switching instantly between them a bit like the heists in GTA V, making this the second time that Volition has shamelessly borrowed from the Grand Theft Auto series, the first one being the entirety of Saints Row 1. When Get Even was first shown off in a concept trailer three years ago, that concept basically appeared to be extremely realistic looking derelict buildings. With its 2017 release date getting closer, there's fortunately a little bit more to the game now. It's a sort of cross between a first person shooter, a supernatural mystery and survival horror, and it still enjoys those atmospheric graphics and sense of real world grime that first piqued our interest four years ago. We played Get Even briefly at Gamescom last year and there's a real creepy urban exploration vibe to it as you pick through a decaying asylum, searching for clues that either evading or gunning down Special Forces soldiers. Shame it's got the least memorable title in the history of gaming. Forget even more like. It's due in spring, so fingers crossed it comes out before the name slides clean off your cerebral cortex. Cool. Mark my words, Jonathan. The more you hold back what's inside you, the quicker you'll become the monster you most fear. Stalking around the place as a moody vampire is pretty much our favourite thing to do in a video game, which is why we take every opportunity to remind you to play Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. This has been your January 2017 reminder, you're welcome. Vampire, with a Y, will have to work pretty hard to steal that game's place in our hearts, but how many vampire games have you played set in London during the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918? Probably zero. You play a character called Jonathan E. Reed, who is both a vampire and a doctor, meaning you have to balance keeping your Hippocratic Oath with keeping yourself topped up to the brim with delicious blood. The reason to be excited about Vampire is it's built by Don't Nod, who made the visually spectacular Remember Me, remember that, and cult hit Life is Strange, so we're expecting gorgeous graphics and awkward teenage slang. No wait, I mean interesting conversation options. That thing. I'm the monster who killed her. You're distressed, I sir. Come inside and we can talk about it. So there you go, those are seven games we're excited about in 2017, but which one of those are you most interested in? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for much more on these games from outside Xbox. See you next time.